Hey, what's going on guys? It's Joe Metlow with Next Level Auto Detail. Today we are going to be demonstrating the difference between entry level and professional machine polishers. There is so much misleading information on Facebook groups and this video is meant to encourage all newbies with entry level polishers that you could still achieve professional results. If you can't remove defects or get the results you desire even with the entry level machine, that is 100% user error. Everyone is so quick to blame their compound, polish, and machine combination instead of figuring out why they are not getting good results. And this makes absolute no sense to me. Here's a quick analogy. This is like saying Tony Hawk wouldn't be able to do a trick on an entry level skateboard. Is it going to be his preference or his first option? No, but Tony Hawk on an entry level skateboard is still going to be an elite skater. So for our demonstration, uh, we're working on the hood of my MR2 Turbo. You can see it's single stage paint. We have heavy oxidation and we are going to be restoring it to like new condition. So on one side of the hood, we're gonna be using the Griot's Garage six inch. And on the other side of the hood, we're gonna be using more professional tools. Okay, so let's get started. We have our Griot's Garage six inch and a foam wool pad from Optimum. It is made by Lake Country. We are going to be adding a decent amount of compound and polish because we want sufficient lubrication to chop away the dead oxidation. So we are going to be spreading the polish with the face of the pad on the entire half of the section that we're going to be working on. We are going to be practicing the mow down technique. We are not going to start off by doing normal two by two sections. We want to work with lively and moisturized paint. So I would have liked to do this video in real time just to demonstrate for you guys. However, the video would have just been far too long. So right now I have the machine on speed setting four and a half. I'm doing nothing fancy. I'm just working this entire section just so we could get to the moisturized paint and then we could practice our normal paint correction uh, routine by working normal two by two sections so the end game goal for this is just to chop away that dead oxidized paint now the foam wool pad is going to be the ideal pad of choice for a situation like this because obviously we are using an entry-level machine and we need as much cut and as much help as possible uh, using a foam pad we can get results however it would just take a lot longer and we would need a lot more foam pads to get the job done now the foam wool pad is going to be the ideal pad of choice over foam for a numerous amount of reasons number one it's going to stay cooler and it's not going to lose its cut so doing all those passes with a foam pad, it's going to get hotter, it's going to lose its cut, and it's going to load up with polish. So right off the bat, you could see the major improvement we did even with a fast mow down technique. However, you can see all of the random scratches that still remain. So it's not perfect, but we did a major improvement by just chopping away all that dead oxidation. Okay, so our mow down technique is all done and now we're ready to start practicing our normal paint correction routine. Now, you'll notice how I swapped to a different pad and the reason I did that is because our first pad, think about it, it has all that dead oxidation, 30 years of grime, of dirt, and it has all that spent polish and compound. So it's best practice to swap to a different pad and this is going to enhance your cut and your finishing ability, making you that much more effective. Now the pad of choice that we're using is the Buff and Shine Lambswool pad. It's my first time using it. I just wanted to see how it stacks up against the Lake Country Lambswool pad because I have been getting questions about it. And we are just gonna be working our normal sections now, the secret to getting professional results with this machine is going to be heavy downward pressure. If you are not applying heavy pressure to the machine so it could translate to the paint, you are wasting your time. That is the main key. Now, your shoulders are going to hate you for doing this, your hands are going to hate you for doing this, but this is what's needed. So looking at the section that we just recently worked on, you could see we did remove a good portion of the random scratches, but there's still a lot of them in there. So we are going to have to go behind it and do yet another buffing cycle. All right, so I want you guys to notice the change in clarity. You see that transition? 
how the side that we mowed down is a lot darker, looks a lot dirtier. And the side that we just polished looks a lot crisper and cleaner. So the more we work and the more sections that we do, we are proving the paint with every buffing cycle. So now we just have to practice this throughout the entire side of the hood until we get the results we want. I'm not going to be blaming the machine. Sure, it's going to hurt my shoulders. It's going to hurt my hands. And it's going to take more time. However, I am going to get the results that I desire because I don't rely on compounds and polishes and machines to get results. I rely on my experience to get the results that I want. Alright, so we're all done cutting the left side of the hood utilizing our entry level polisher. All those random scratches are gone and all it took was patience and understanding of what needs to be done in order to get the results that we want. So now it's time to tackle the other side, but this time with our professional grade tools. Alright, so our first machine of choice for this side of the hood is going to be the Makita Rotary. We are still going to be practicing the mow down technique. And our pad of choice is the Lake Country Purple Foam Mold Pad. We're running at speed 3 at 1500 RPMs. All right, so here's a quick pop quiz. What do you guys notice that's different uh, when we did our first initial mow down on the left side of the hood compared to this side? And I know you want to say probably the rotary swirls and the holograms, but that's a given. That's superficial. This is our first step. We're not worried about that. What you should notice is that we don't have those random scratches that we had in our first initial mow down on the left side of the hood. Remember those random scratches that we were talking about that I had to go back and do more passes? Well, we really don't have that on this side of the hood. So taking out these holograms and these swirl marks is going to be a lot easier than chasing those random scratches, if that makes sense, because essentially the hard part is already done. So I decided I wanted to do another buffing cycle with the rotary. I probably could have skipped this step, but uh, I just wanted to go behind it. But this time I didn't use a compound. I just used a finishing polish just to help us get a little bit of a better finish. So after we did that second pass, uh, pretty much all the defects are gone. There's no scratches. There's no swirl marks. All those random scratches are gone. All we have to do is refine the finish and remove our buffer trail. So on the left side of the hood with the griots, we had to do smaller working sections and we had to go over multiple times in order to remove all the defects. On this side, 
In two buffing cycles with the rotary, we were able to remove all the damage. Now all we have to worry about is the refining stage. So now we're going to swap to our G21. I'm still using the lambswool pad with a finishing polish to replicate the process on the other side. You will notice I'm working a much larger area in comparison to me using the entry level tool. This is because we are refining the finish. We are not necessarily removing or chasing scratches, but instead just removing our buffer trails. So working smaller sections is not needed. So you could see the results we achieved on the Pro Tool side. We essentially achieved these results in three buffing cycles while working larger areas. The left side of the hood took smaller working sections and multiple buffing cycles to get these results. So for our secondary step, we're going to be using the blue Lake Country HDO pad with a finishing polish uh, just for refinement. It is single stage paint, but this is very hard single stage paint and it just responds very well to uh, harder and firmer pads. So we're going to finish this side and then replicate the same process on the other side, but obviously we're going to still utilize our Grios Garage 6 inch. So our process is now complete, it's time to compare the right side and the left side of the hood and see if there's any difference in the overall outcome. You will notice that there is no difference between the left side of the hood and the right side. They are both fully corrected and equally as glossy. The only difference in these processes were the effort and time it took to achieve these results. The left side of the hood took more time more patience and more passes while the right side took less time and was a lot easier to achieve those same results. So I would like to give you guys the final analogy on entry level polishers versus pro grade polishers. Saying an entry level machine can't give you good results is like saying a daily driver can't finish a quarter mile drag race. Absolutely a race car is going to get you across that line much faster, an example 10 seconds while the daily driver will get you across the line in about 17 or 18 seconds. Getting across the line as fast as possible is always the main goal. But saying the daily driver can't make it across the line is just not true. It may not be the fastest or the most exciting, but it will eventually get you across that line. So instead of blaming your machine polisher, instead of looking for a miracle polishing compound to fix the paint for you, it's your job as the user to make what you have work. He must row with the oars he has. So that is going to end today's video. I hope you guys learned something and I also hope I encouraged and addressed all the misleading information that is out there. If you guys did learn something today by watching the video, consider giving the video a like. It will help our channel grow and I greatly appreciate you taking out the time to watch some of my videos. I will see you guys in the next one and remember, next level mentality.